Hi, everybody. It's Jessica Stone at Stansberry Research, and I've reached Amanda Kavochi of the Health and Wealth Bulletin here. Amanda, you say we should smash our Fitbit? What are you talking about? Well, yes and no. I think the important thing here is to say smash your Fitbit if you're only using it to count 10,000 steps. I mean, okay. we've been told time and time again, 10,000 steps is ideal, right? I mean, that's what everyone's trying to get to. That's the goal that everyone's trying to beat. Um, but it turns out that 10,000 steps isn't really the best goalpost we should be using. What should um, we be using? So 10,000 steps, believe it or not, is actually just a marketing gimmick. Back in the- Oh, I'm shocked. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Advertising psychology at its finest. Uh, basically, you know, in the mid 60s, when the first um, pedometer came out, it was a Japanese company, and they just wanted a number that would be auspicious, you know, that would make people want to buy it and say, this is the key for your health. Um, but we've seen a bunch of studies that show that 10,000 isn't really ideal. You probably want to get a little bit less than that. But the key- Oh, good. I thought you were going to say more. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> don't up the answer, Amanda. 50,000, no. The key isn't really the number of steps. It's the intensity with which you work out. So if you're walking at a leisurely pace, that's not going to get you the health benefits of doing a brisk walk. Well, you this know, is sort of the difference between um, high intensity interval training, the HIT workouts, which, you know, I, I'm starting to get into because I have less time and more need <laughs> to burn calories. Um, but I feel like that's sort of a recent iteration. So the idea is you really need to have higher intensity, even for a short period of time, over longer uh, periods of time with lower intensity. You get a better result if you do it that way, right? Absolutely. And you know, Doc ifrig has been a big believer in the HIIT workouts for years. I mean, even before it was really popular in the mainstream oh, media. what a trendsetter. <laughs> he is. He's, he's definitely a trendsetter. Um, and one of the things that we wrote about recently was, you know, the UK has this program called the Active 10. And what they did is they looked at people who were just getting their 10,000 steps however they wanted. And then they looked at these folks who intentionally did three sets of 10 active minutes a day. And by active, I mean they were getting moderate level exercise. Moderate is, you know, when you're starting to kind of breathe a little bit heavier, but you're not completely out of breath. You can talk, but you can't sing, um, which sounds kind of silly. Like you're at the gym. Can I talk? Can I sing? You want to be able to carry on a conversation, but still struggle with it and not be able to do more than that. You know, as opposed to like having a leisurely walk where you can sing, you can do whatever, because you're not putting in enough intensity, right? So what they found was that the folks who were doing the three rounds of active 10 minutes where they were at that moderate pace, they actually had much better health results at the end of the study. Um, even compared, they were getting about like six to 9,000 steps a day as opposed to the 10,000 step group. So um, that's a key factor we're looking at right now is knowing that this difference between uh, intensity levels is what's really giving you the most benefit. All right, it's Amanda Kowachi there with the Health and Wealth Bulletin. It is not how long you work out, but how hard you work out. Thanks so much. 10,000 Steps, the myth with Amanda Kowachi. Um, If you want to be directly connected to her writings and the rest of the franchise, please hover on your screen now. We'll connect you there. Plus, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Thanks for watching. That's all for now.